Hi, I'm Ryan and you are watching my YouTube series on functional programming. If you find this series useful, please subscribe, like or let me know in the comments. In this episode, we are going to see an example of how to refactor a simple use case using some of the functional concepts we have learned earlier. So let's get started. We have an object over here called agent with the first name and last name of Ethan Hunt. And our mission, if we choose to accept it, is to print an agent's full name. Not a very noble mission, I would say. However, it is not what you do, it is how you do it that makes all the difference. So, throughout the series, I'm going to, ex I'm going to refactor a function called as getFullName. And uh, we will see how this goes. So we have this function called as getFullName, which simply takes the, you know, a user and concatenates them the first name, last name with a string and the space in between. This is cool, but let's see how we can make this better. So I want to get rid of the plus, so I'm going to say, you know, let's take you away, place you in an array, and then join you. This is nice and cool, this works, but then we realize that we don't need a space here because hey join takes an argument and this works that's fine this is as far as you can probably get with uh, the inbuilt utilities and functions for map and join but uh, let's take a functional approach to this and try to understand how we can refactor this so if you see our problem is twofold the first part is we need to take the first name and the last name two attributes of an object and then we need to join them using a delimiter. So let's create some functional utilities, utilities to do exactly that. So I'm going to comment this out for now. And let's uncomment these functional utilities here. So I have a get values utility which takes a bunch of fields and an object and maps the values of those fields, places them in an array. The other one is a join function which takes a delimiter and a string and joins them together. And then I have an array of fields here. So now let's try to refactor a code using these utilities. So now I can say something like get values of the name fields from the user and join them using a string, an empty string. And let's see if this works. And it does. But notice that we already know the first argument of both of these functions beforehand. And that makes it a prime candidate for curry. So let's do that. Curry is equal to require lambda. And now I can curry my utility functions. And now what I can do is since they are curried functions, they can take one argument at a time. The first argument is a space, the second argument is this value. And because this is also curried, so it can take two arguments like this. And now let's run our code. It works. Yes, it does. But notice over here, what we're actually doing is we're running the inner function first and then the outer function. And that means this is a prime candidate for function composition. So let's do that. So I'm going to do, copy this over here, and then I'm going to compose, get values of name, and then join and they're curried functions so it's going to work let's see oh i need to pass it the argument agent my bad and there you go but notice when you are using compose you're writing stuff on multiple lines it kind of gets weird when you have to read from bottom to top so i'm going to use pipe instead which is my code operator when write when composing functions so let's pipe and let's 
reverse the order of the arguments. So we can now read from top to bottom. And let's import pipe over here. And now let's run our code. And we have the same output. I should make this user. Okay. The other thing to notice over here, or the last thing to notice over here, is that the pipe function is eventually expecting one argument, which is the same as the function get full name. So we can now convert it to point free notation by simply doing this. And there you go. You have your get full name function, which uses function utilities like pipe and curried function get values and another curried function join and it's a lot more readable it's a lot more declarative than what we had earlier so we started with simple concatenation we created a bunch of utilities which can perhaps be used elsewhere and we ended up with some declarative code forgetful name well that's about it for this video uh, I hope you liked it and stay tuned for more interesting stuff in the upcoming video. Thanks for watching.